When is the time to stop grieving for the dead and move on? It's a difficult question to ask. For some people, they can get over it relatively quickly, while for others, the grieving never ends. The subjects of grief and loss are some of the major themes within the film Children Who Chase Lost Voices, directed by Makoto Shinkai. Yes, the same Makoto Shinkai who's directed other popular titles such as Your Name, Weathering With You, and most recently, Suzume. I put up a poll to let my community decide which of these four movies to review, and you guys selected Children Who Chase Lost Voices, which clocks in at about a two hour watch. So without further ado, let's get into the review. Children Who Chase Lost Voices follows two different characters, Asuna and Ryuji, and their journey throughout Agartha, a legendary world located within the Earth's core. Asuna, who's seen as upbeat and positive, is an intelligent 11-year-old girl who's lonely since her father died when she was younger and her mother is always working at her job as a nurse. Outside of school, she spends most of her time listening for signals through a crystal-powered radio device in the mountains and one day tunes into a bizarre but also beautiful tune. Soon after that experience while traveling to her hideout, she's attacked by a bear-like creature and is promptly saved by a boy named Shun who comes from Agartha. Little does she know that this encounter would initiate the start of a long, perilous journey as she's told that Shun died shortly after saving her. Ryuji is an adult who has been looking for Agartha for the past 10 years. Rumor has it that within its fabled lands, there is a place where you can resurrect the dead. He's been doing everything within his power to find it so he can be reunited with his deceased wife, Lisa. Asuna gets dragged into this situation with him, which even includes a military group looking for a way into Agartha. Thanks to Shin, Shun's younger brother, who goes into the overworld to collect his brother's crystal, Ryuji and Asuna follow him into Agartha and set out for their destination. Asuna's curiosity of this new alien land, along with the potential of seeing Shun again, makes her continue on this journey with somebody who has a similar goal to her, Ryuji. The duo have an interesting dynamic with one another, one being innocent, mature for her age, and a curious child who wants to see a loved one who just recently died, and the other being a war-hardened, calm, cool, and collected adult who has been struggling to find meaning in his life for the past 10 years because of his lost loved one. This long journey gives both of the characters plenty of time to think about their future and to figure out if they really want to go through the resurrection process before reaching the gate of life and death. The themes within this movie are easily the strongest part of it. Children Who Chase Lost Voices is about life and death, and how each of us perceives them. It reminds us that grieving for the dead is fine, but at some point we do need to recover, look towards the future, and move on. As is said within the movie, if we continue to pity the dead, it is erroneous and unproductive. Looking towards the future, living on, and finding your happiness is much more important. Instead of looking at the past, continuing to pity those who have died. That is what your deceased loved one would want you to do. Remember them, but move on. I know it is extremely hard to say goodbye, but at some point you need to embrace the loss and move on. We often take for granted time spent with loved ones, so treasure what is important to you because you never know when it will be taken away. Children Who Chase Lost Voices ends with the song Hello, Goodbye, and Hello. The song is not only beautiful, but the title of it is accurate for one of the biggest themes of this work. Life is full of introductions and goodbyes. Throughout life, we form relationships with others. Hello. Then those relationships end via death or other circumstances. Goodbye. And then we begin to move forward to the next part of our lives. Hello. Repeating the cycle. Children Who Chase Lost Voices pacing is a mess overall. However, it slowly does get better as the movie progresses. The beginning time spent in the overworld setting up the adventure was ridiculously slow and definitely should have been cut down, probably by about half. Then it started to pick up from the time that Asuna and Ryuji traveled throughout Agartha until they reached the village to help save Shin. That section was also a bit slow, focusing more on the landscapes rather than the journey itself, but it's nowhere near as bad as the first 30 minutes of the film. Then the remainder of the movie is without a doubt the best section of it being well paced, executed well, and one that could bring you to tears. I think if they cut down the first two thirds of the movie, especially cutting more of the overworld stuff, and then adding more time well spent within Agartha, this movie would have been more enjoyable. This movie is missing something. Well, I'd say more than something, since it's pretty rough. The story felt disjointed, not coming together as intended, with certain parts of it not blending well together with others. Anything dealing with Shun or Shin felt largely underdeveloped. The film never made me care about Asuna heading into Agartha since she was dragged into this mess to begin with. I get it, she wants to see Shun again, but that was her only encounter ever with him, never spending time together prior, so to me it felt irrational that she'd risk her life to see him again. I can kind of see where her loss fits into the movie, but the delivery and execution of it isn't all that great. Overall, I was indifferent towards Asuna as the story never made me think that she was the most important character within it. It felt like Ryuji was. 
I think Ryuji was damn near perfectly executed, making us care about him as well as sympathize with him even through his actions by the end. I'm not saying what he did was right, but you'll fully understand where he is coming from. It's difficult to blame him in the end since he did what many others would do in that scenario. He spent the past 10 years struggling to find meaning within his life without his other half, his wife Lisa. He's done everything within his power to find a way for her to return. So with his goal now in sight, I cannot blame him for doing what he did, sacrificing not only a part of himself, but Asuna as well. You can see that while the transformation process is slowly occurring, he regrets what is happening to Asuna, but at the same time doesn't want it to stop, since he values his wife over everything else. The ending is not only emotional, but also relatable to many people because there's a very good chance that you have lost somebody special to you, just as Ryuji did and would love even just one more moment spent with them. I think if you shift the focus solely onto Ryuji, this idea could have been something really special. Narrow the focus to one person's grieving instead of spreading it out amongst three different people, Shin, Ryuji, and Asuna. This would make the movie's themes much more impactful. Delve deeper into Ryuji's grieving over the past 10 years. Provide him stories from others in similar situations to him, along his journey throughout the overworld, and Agartha and how they have overcome their losses. Have Ryuji start to question whether he wants to go through with his end goal of resurrecting his wife. Have him reach his end goal, and from there have the end result be the exact same as what happens in the movie. Now obviously there would need to be far more revisions made to this idea, but I think the overall movie would have drastically improved with these changes. I don't know if this is true exactly, but this movie felt like some type of homage to the various Studio Ghibli films. Certain characters felt very similar to ones you'd find in them, not only acting similar to them, but also looking very similar. Same thing can be said of the nature and landscapes within both Agartha and the overworld. This movie provides a Ghibli-esque vibe, so many different moments within it made me feel like I was watching a Studio Ghibli film. I'm not here to argue whether or not this movie does a good job capturing the same magic that Ghibli films do. Personally, for the most part, I don't think it does, but I do want to state the obvious comparisons to them. I give Children Who Chase Lost Voices a 6.5 out of 10. Is this worth checking out? I'd say yeah. I'd say at the very least you can enjoy it because of the art and themes within it. It's just that other aspects like the execution of the general story and pacing can drag it down at times. It definitely ends on a good note though, and be prepared for the potential of crying at the end. I personally didn't cry, but I know many others will. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.